Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and oh my goodness, that's Friends Lego. What's that doing on Robin's channel? Oh, don't tell me he's going to abandon his Lego city and turn it into a Friends city with all the garish colours that that would involve. No, don't worry, I'm going to do another challenge. <laughs> Yes, so hot on the heels of the last challenge I did, uh, and that one was classic space themed, and I made a classic space hopper cargo wagon with two little things bouncing around, a lot of motion to add to my train. Uh, I've got this based on set 41686, Magical Acrobatics, a friend set from 2021, where we have Olivia and Stella, or it might be Olivia and Stella, I don't really know, <laughs> doing two different things. One which is quite satisfying, the rings on a bar. And then this one, where there is a wagon that has been pulled by a horse in the set. I've already sent that uh, horse to the Lego glue factory. Uh, but uh, the remaining mechanism is really good and very smooth and quite a fun motion. And that is the basis for the challenge today that was set down quite a while back, as you can tell by the header of this letter, Happy New Year, <laughs> from Harry, Toby, Teddy and Georgie, and presumably Dad and Mum as well. Uh, and they wanted me to use this set, which they sent along very generously to my address, and you can do the same if you want to for a future challenge. Um, they wanted me to turn this mechanism into another wagon for my cargo train. Now, that comes with some prerequisites as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to include all these very garish colours. I'm not going to include the mini doll character. But otherwise, I really like it because this is incredibly satisfying. And I think it'll look really good as kind of a, I guess, fairground or maybe circus kind of themed wagon to go along with my uh, elephant one uh, as well. So, yeah, I think that's a really good challenge, uh, but not one that was easy by any means. Uh, the parts that I needed to make this were quite hard to come by, but even worse than that, it's the mechanism, because this thing is actually three studs wide, and, well, getting it inside a wagon so it's low enough to go uh, through my tunnels and underneath all of my bridges and all the rest of it was an absolute nightmare, <laughs> if I must be honest. It was a lot of work. So, uh, yeah, what might seem like a very simple build at the end of it was uh, the product of a very long but productive uh, design process. So, first of all, I'm going to briefly take you through that and then we can get on with the build. So, the problem with having a three stud wide hoop is that basically train wheels are inherently four studs apart, meaning if you've got bricks supporting them, then you've only got a two stud gap in the middle. So I tried having the whole hoop on top of the train structure, but then it was too high for my tunnels and bridges. So I experimented with other seven wide builds to see if it would still fit in the middle, but it really just didn't work. So the only way I could think from then was to use plates on their sides as the edges, which has all sorts of different problems for ways of connecting the axles for the wheels themselves. Uh, it would also be a lot more fragile uh, and would need to be kind of pinned together with the wheels themselves. So it does now fit with this sort of a coffin shaped build, but well, would it work? And that is the real question that I couldn't really solve on Digital Designer. But yeah, the process was long and well, I needed a lot of iterations to get to my final product. <laughs> Good, good. Well, that's the design finished. Now we can get on to the build. Uh, and the axle that is holding all of this together is this rather interesting long pin, really. It's got one uh, end of pin that can go into the wheel that comes with the original set that provides the friction for the mechanism on the inside. Uh, and then the other end has got a too long regular axle on it. And that is long enough to go into a spacer. Uh, and then through the hole of this modified plate in medium azure, which is one of the colours I'm going to be using. I am still going to make it very bright, just not using these sort of uh, purples and <laughs> dark turquoises that I think kind of all clash a little bit. Uh, anyway, then we add the train wheel onto the outside, and it's quite important that we still have this sort of loosely spinning, so that seems to be about right. And, and that is going to be one of our four wheels, they're kind of independent, and here's the other one for this side. Uh, then I can put together the rest of the side and I'm bringing in another bright colour in this lime and these were some of the parts that were really hard to get hold of but just really fit my colour scheme so I thought they were worth waiting for. Then I can clip each of these wheel mechanisms kind of into that and finish off the sides 
with these pieces. So I'll probably strengthen this later, but that is essentially one of the sides. And if we bring in some track, you can see that will be kind of working with all of these studs on the side, but each wheel powering the friction driven mechanism on the inside. So obviously I need a second one of those. So that's there. So those are waiting to be pinned together by the two ends. So for the end, I'm kind of doing quite an odd build actually, because as I said, that gap in the middle is actually three wide. So I'm kind of converting three wide to six wide, which is quite complicated. So here's a three by three plate with some round studs with the hole in the middle. And that's important because the next bit is going to be actually attaching to the kind of anti-stud, well, the middle ones really. So you see those three middle ones that so hangs off a half uh, stud well, one and a half studs on each side like that. So that is turning kind of a three wide build into a six wide build. Uh, and then on the other half, I can put some modified bricks uh, on either side and they're gonna hold the two sides together, that three stud width apart, yeah? Then we can build up this six wide end because we're gonna have to have some buffers on there. Two by three plate there. One by three jumper plate there. It doesn't matter what color that is because it's going to be hidden in a moment. And then that jumper and the uh, six wide bit can support the buffer, you see. So we've got a three wide build in the middle going to a six wide build at the end. And that was one of the complicated things I had to really sort out during that design process. But we've got our third bright color being introduced there. Then we can add some more medium azure with these one by two plates and one by four tile just to kind of give that a little bit more strength so the buffer doesn't pop off because it's not held on incredibly well. Uh, and then just to hide some of the nastier colors on the inside and the back of that buffer, I'm just going to use three of these slopes that have kind of like got tiles sort of integrated with them so they're very smooth uh, and that's more of that magenta color uh, and white. So I think that looks really good. So obviously I need two of these as well. So there we go. And this one's got two extra glow in the dark uh, round tiles on. And I'm going to be pilfering some more off the donor set in a moment. So essentially this can go there. Oh, yeah, I better do the both ends first, don't we? And there. Ooh. See, it's quite fragile at the moment, but it will get more strength when I get the other side on there and oh, there. And then we end up with our basic multicolored carriage. And you can see it's got that three wide hole in the middle for our massive hoop, uh, but still adheres to the normal sort of width for our train wheel. So when we put it on here, it will still fit and they'll go round nicely with their rubber bands on the wheels. And you can, well, probably not tell uh, that those tires are moving on the inside, but I can assure you they are. Uh, and this is all at the right height to fit with other train wagons, which is another thing that was really complicated about getting this design absolutely perfect. So uh, I suppose the proof of the pudding is to put the hoop on the inside and check that it works. And there we go. It's working fairly well, but I think that's partially because I just put it together and probably got one of the wheels a bit too close. But I'll give those a bit of fine tuning so we can get this motion even smoother. And then I think we need to steal all the decorations off this, like the stars, the glow in the dark tiles, and probably even these big round ones to go on my new version. And I'm kind of toying with the idea of adding some of the original stickers, probably not these two, but these big uh, shiny ones obviously went on these. So yeah, I think I might be adding those too. So yeah, stage one, mechanism complete. A uh, bit of fine tuning required, but you can kind of see it is working. All good so far. Well, builds like this do need a bit of fine tuning. And having done that, I think I've got the motion about as smooth as I can. And I think that's going to be really important when we get to actually testing it to make sure this is doing the required action when it goes around. But it's already looking good in its new colour scheme. I think it's much better than the original. Uh, but I have pilfered off the other side of that uh, all the decor from the original. And I think that makes it even better with this kind of black and white kind of Harlequin style colouring uh, with these quarter tiles, the stars on, the glow in the dark ones here and on the corners and that sticker, of course. So yeah, you'll have to tell me what you think of that. But I think all of that decor is a bit better than just having the block colors. So I'm gonna add that to the second side. Uh, and then we need to do something about the rider because that just ain't right. 
All right, well, decor complete on one side and the other one. And it's all looking rather bright and fantastic, uh, but in a colour palette that I can stand, so that's all right. <laughs> and I'm really quite impressed with the uh, build of this, with the mechanism in the middle, kind of in a trough, and this three wide sort of structure with plates on the side morphing into a six wide at the end, so it fits with everything else on the train. Uh, I do think it's going to be slightly weaker than all of the others, given the length of my train and the weight it has to pull. So I think I'll have to have it on the back end of the train, so it's not got too much weight kind of pulling it apart. Uh, but these wheels do kind of hold the two sides onto uh, the rest of the structure to a degree. So yeah, I think it should be all right. Uh, but now on to the uh, riders of the wheel. I don't want a mini doll in there. And I've changed the 1x6 plate to two of these three long jumpers. So we kind of got space for two mini figures to take their place. Uh, and I thought that would be good because then we could have one facing one way and one facing the other way when it goes around the track. So who best to include on this ride? Well, I thought about some acrobats to keep with that theme. And the closest I could get was two ice skaters. One being the Series 4 Ice Skater, and the other one being the Series 22 Figure Skating Champion, who clearly were designed to make a pair. And I don't think I've even held these together uh, myself, but I mean, they're absolutely fantastic, aren't they? And they've even got their matching sort of heavily quiffed sort of uh, blonde hair. So I reckon we'll have one facing one way and one facing the other. So we kind of get a view like that or like that. So let's add them. Should we have the waving hands in the middle? And I think that'll look really good. So we'll have that going around or that going around. And it's suitably cheesy with those big grins. <laughs> and the blue kind of works, even though it's a slightly different one with the blue of the carriage. So here we go. This is our kind of final dry run before the actual one. And yeah, that's gonna look really good, isn't it? So they're gonna get incredibly dizzy because they'll be going completely upside down, round and round and round. Uh, well, and going round and round and round my city, so it'll be absolutely crazy. But that, you've got to admit, is a pretty good looking carriage. So I'm really glad that I had that challenge from Harry, Toby, Teddy and Georgie. I think it's been another good one. So we need to test this on the super long cargo train, of course, but yeah, so far, I'm very happy with it. <laughs> cool. So there is our acrobat wagon on the train, looking very bright and colourful indeed. Uh, and it's quite near the back end of it, so it's only got to pull two more wagons and a pump wagon uh, with its reduced strength because of its interesting build. But yeah, I think that's looking really good. It's not very realistic, of course, having acrobats on a wheel on a wagon, but, you know, I do like a bit of motion in my train, uh, like the Space Hopper one. Where's that? Uh, last time I turned this train on, actually, I thought it was broken and something had derailed because it was making a god-awful noise uh, with the, there we are, uh, hoppers going up and down <laughs> frenetically. I thought, oh my goodness, what's gone wrong? <laughs> but it was actually working well. So anyway, let's get this train going. And get a sort of nice medium rate going. You see, there's the hop, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> and then we should see, oh, there we are. The wheel spinning. Hey, hey. Looks pretty good, actually. Seems to be going quite smoothly. Yeah, quite fast. Quite dizzying. <laughs> oh, golly, I should have done it slower. Hadn't tested it underneath the castle tunnels. Well, I think that works rather well. Uh, the round sort of shape of it seems to go... Oh, God. Nee, turn off. Had some sort of derailment in... The castle. One of the uh, locomotives has escaped, uh, but essentially it doesn't seem like anything's totally fallen over. So I think we're all right. Be interesting to work out what did that. Looks space hopper related. Well, I'm very happy to say that it isn't the space hopper wagon that's at fault because I'd really hate to lose that. But we've reached that critical point with the cargo train uh, in that it's so horrifically long that basically things are uncoupling themselves, even though I've got these one by two uh, grill pieces joining together the buffers for extra strength. Now I can add one of those to the bottom of each buffer as well as the top, but it's really uh, under a lot of stress. Uh, and that's because, well, it's going around loads of different corners all at the same time because the head of it is here 
Uh, and to show you the back of it, it's actually a lot quicker to go this way around <laughs> because uh, the uh, end of it is there with the caboose and the pump wagon afterwards, of course. So essentially what I'm going to have to do is split up my locomotives, which were all at the front, uh, providing the power. Uh, so what I've done is I've put the green one, the Hulk, and the yellow one, the Colonel. Oh no, it was the Hornet, wasn't it? After the vote. I still prefer Colonel, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, basically about a third away from the front uh, and I think the problem is probably come from the fact that I've put a lot more that require motion uh, so this one and this one and the cement wagon one there and the one we've just added of course and they've all got a lot more friction than all the really free moving ones that are normal so I think it's just added that additional bit of drag to the whole train which means that it's struggling to get around well two corners because it's got to pull that way and then just the power to tracks turning the motion that way and then again turning it that way I mean it's ridiculous that it works at all really anyway here is our wagon uh, still waiting to have its full test run uh, and I was about to say when it all crashed that it, the circular kind of look of it really goes well next to those three electrical drums of course but anyway um, let's try with the uh, power spread throughout the train a bit more so I'll just try and get all of these getting the infrared signal at the same time so there's a fancy name for that it's something like split power differential or something like that I can't remember you train buffs will know uh, but basically it's what they do in real life trains to prevent the exact same problem sharing out the power throughout the length of the train so it's going a bit slow at the moment but you see we've got one two then quite a few wagons, then three, four. And I don't want to put them too far apart from each other, those locomotives, because otherwise the infrared signal that I'm controlling them from my uh, power functions uh, won't reach them all at the same time. Uh, and then we'll have other problems with some of them trying to drive and some of them not. And I use power functions because I've got rechargeable batteries for them. Uh, but there is our new wagon, finally getting its test run and proving that it does work rather well actually. I mean it's not going to be absolutely perfectly smooth motion because it is relying on friction and on those tyres but I've got to say actually it almost is perfect really. Can't see it really glitching much at all and its motion next to those three round green drums almost makes me think that those three should spin as well but <laughs> I'm not going to do that as another challenge I can tell you that now. But yeah, I like it a lot actually. So I'm just going to wait for the front to catch up and then I'm going to increase the speed because with all the obstacles around my track, you can't increase the speed just anywhere. You've got to basically wait so they're all slightly in line of sight. So a bit faster and there's the space hopper going absolutely crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely becoming the most annoying uh, sounding one. And here we go. So that is quite a spin it's got going there. I think it's a bit more slippy at this speed, isn't it? Because the wheels on the inside are going a lot faster. Yeah. Cool. Well, you guys will have to tell me what the proper term is for splitting your uh, locomotives uh, along the train in the comments section. And you'll have to tell me what you think of this wonderful new carriage. But I think it's another challenge received and another challenge well done, if I do say so myself. That was very tricky to get running. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I don't know what I'll be doing because I'm completely out of sequence because of all the hot weather we've been having. Uh, but rest assured, it'll be a mock build on a Monday and a Friday and a brick haul on a Wednesday. And if you want to send something to a future brick haul, you can to the usual address. Uh, but otherwise, I'll see you next time. See you.